I always like to begin these webinars with a reminder introduction to our online permitting resource center. This is where we post everything up to date about how to use um, CSS and uh, the instructions on how to apply online and rules for uploading. So everything we talk about today is here and you can always refer back to this page. This is also where we will post these webinars so you can refer back to. So just a little scroll scroll through that website. You can see it has, all of these are clickable links with instruction videos and links. Please make sure you keep yourselves muted. This website explains um, how to digitally sign and seal alternatives um, to signing and sealing, including hash. If you missed our last webinar, that video is also posted here, and that gives you instructions on how to actually upload your plans into CSS. This webinar will just focus on how to prepare your plans. Okay. So submission standards for your plans. All drawings must be digitally signed and sealed. And we ask that you use one of the trusted agencies, Identrust, GlobalSign, DigiCert, and Trust Data Card. If you're uploading a multi-page PDF, which is a requirement that your plans be multi-page PDF, the engineer, architect, or interior designer that designed, that did the drawings, only need to place their digital signature and seal on the cover or the first page. They don't need to stamp every page as long as it's in a set. Allow markups. Your plans should allow for markups. So whoever is creating those that those drawings should make the property settings so that it allows for markups. This is required so that at the end of the process, when your plans are approved, we can stamp them with the approved stamp. If we if we can't stamp them with the approved, then we will ask you to resubmit all the plans again. In addition to that, the the reviewers, if they have a comment and they may do a markup, they won't be able to do a markup where you can see it unless you allow unless the the design professional leaves the plan so that a markup is allowed. So they they, they cannot be password protected or encrypted so that we can allow for markup and that'll allow us also to approve the sheet. Um, no one will be able to make a change and the design professional needs to know this. You cannot make a change to a to a drawing without it invalidating the digital seal. So once we do a markup, um, it invalidates the seal or when we put the stamp at the end. But the fact that it came in properly signed and sealed is enough for the record to show that it was properly digitally signed and sealed at the beginning. The next requirement. I'm sorry. Yeah, I need to add. Uh, sure, Pedro wants to add something. Yeah, I need to add that the requirement for the digital seal is that the digital signature must be on the index page of the multi page document, but the rest of the pages must have a seal, the image of the seal. In the in the proper location for for printing, um, this doesn't mean you cannot digitally sign each single page. So it can can come sign every page, or you can use the image of a seal on the rest of the pages. But they all have to have a seal. Okay. The next requirement is one PDF per discipline for your drawing. So what this means is. You're going to have one PDF file for architectural, one for mechanical, one for your electrical drawings, one for your plumbing drawings. And if they, if it has multi pages, then and that's fine. You have a, one PDF with multiple pages. And it has an index page like we talked about. All your files must begin with an index index page of all the sheets in the file. 
to you. Other requirements for your plans include leaving a two inch by two inch blank empty area in the upper right corner for the approved stamp. PDF files shall only have one layer without any embedded objects. Scan documents should be clear, legible, and sh but should not be scanned at greater than 300 DPI. The drawings must contain a scale. Do not flatten files. All drawings should have the same XY axis. Maximum size per file is 500 megabytes. So the system, the CSS system, five megabytes. will only accept the 500 megabytes. Um, about flattening the files, it refers to not flattening after signing. Because that it validates the signature, it becomes an image only. If you flatten after you sign, you remove the digital key and it becomes just the image of the signature. So uh, you can flatten, of course, you can flatten the files before that. You have to flatten before. Before you flatten, er you flatten everything before and then you apply the signature and 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 send. That's the last thing you do. Do not flatten the sign with the signature on. Some plans require two signatures, such as shop drawings, and in those cases, you can add two signature fields, and this the can be stamped by both the engineer and the, the designer. The designer or the architect. Naming your files. So we attempted to um, keep it simple. Excuse me. Yes. Hello. Hi, Jimmy. Go ahead. Um, hello. Can I go back a little bit to that flattening? Okay. Sure. We're talking about flattening any comments we put on. We do that. Um, and then we're also talking about the the no. encrypting so they can allow markups. Is if they're encrypting the plans. No, they can't encrypt. So no, they, they shouldn't be encrypting the plans. Okay, can you go back a slide? Uh, allow markers. PDS files oh, shall not be encrypted or, or pass. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I see it. No problem. Okay, all right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right, so naming of files, back to naming of files. We we, we kept it simple. Um, some jurisdictions have very complicated naming conventions. Here we don't need to get complicated. It's very simple. Um, files should be named according to the discipline or the, the contents of the files and the version of the file being submitted. For example, if you're submitting architectural plans, simply write architectural plan. If you're submitting a Application, simply name your file application. Subsequent submissions would have the subsequent version numbers after the name of the file. So for example, architectural plans would be architectural plans dash V2. Our, um, sorry, I think I was muted, so I'm going to repeat that. Architectural plans, um, for subsequent versions, you would put V2 at the end. All file names should be in uppercase, and that's just to maintain uh, consistency in the name of the files and keep uniformity. File names should also not contain any sp special characters, such as an asterisk, parentheses, question marks, percent signs, colons, etc. Excuse me, I have a question because the V2 means that is the second version that you submit. I'm sorry, you need to stop asking the questions, type them, and we will deal with it. We will not be able to finish if everyone keeps interrupting with questions. Please provide the questions in writing. The first version is V1. Any subsequent version will be V2 the second time. The third time will be V3. But please, your questions, put them in writing. In the chat box. In the chat box. Thank you. What is required? What is required for 
documents to be accepted and sent to the reviewers. So these are our gatekeepers. Our gatekeepers are our permit counter intake staff who review the files before sending them to reviewers. So what they're looking for is the following, that all signatures that are required to be on these documents are on these documents. For, for plans, they're looking for a verified digital seal from the architects and engineers. For contractors, they're looking for notarized signatures or digital signatures. And for owners, we're also looking for notarized signatures. They're also looking for clear high definition documents and plans. We're looking for that it has the one PDF per discipline as we previously discussed. And they're also looking in the property settings to make sure that the plans show that it allows markups. And in, in the next slides, I'm going to show you some examples of these. So here are some examples of correct submissions. And this is what our, our staff is looking for. We're lo looking that the signature plan panel. And so, you know, we, we open things in Bluebeam. That's the software that we use. So this is what it looks like to us in Bluebeam. We're looking for the signature panel has green. That means um, it's all validated. Green means valid. We're also looking at the authority to make sure that you've used one of our trusted authorities. Like for example, here you can see it says Identrust. So that means that you did use one of the, and it's not self signed. We're looking for the green seals, the check marks, the words that say signature is valid. So before submitting, check your documents and make sure that you see this as well. We're looking for one multi-page PDF per discipline. So if you look at the picture in the upper left-hand corner where I, that's what it would look like in your files, right? When you're browsing your files before you're attaching, you should have prepared your files in a manner similar to this, where you named your files per discipline, you use the capital letters, and you have one file per di discipline. Then what our staff is looking for is these types of images from the Bluebeam screen, right? They're looking at the view, they're seeing that it has continuous pages. It may have one sheet and that's okay, but if you have multiple pages, our staff is looking for those continuous pages. They're also looking to make sure that all the A sheets are in that file and you, you didn't mix in M sheets or E sheets or P sheets in that file, that that file only has what you're, what you're saying it is for. Yeah, I want to clear up that because people get confused and they submit a package that contains single uh, page uh, files inside. Mm -hmm. So you upload a large file that is essentially equivalent to a zip file with many files inside, and, and, and that's not valid. That would be one file per page still, and it would be rejected. We need, we need to have all the pages in one single file. I wish I had an example. And here's the, the third thing they're looking for that we mentioned about the document properties. They're looking to see that in the document security settings, all of these items say allowed. So you see the red box where it says adding markups says allowed, and this is what we're looking for. And these are settings that the designer controls when they are setting up the file and when they're adding their digital seal. They, they control those settings, allowing for markups. So here are some examples of incorrect submissions um, where it shows on the signature panel, no signature at all. It shows not verifiable, um, they're not present or they're invalid, or it's an image of a of a signature and it has no digital key. Um, we uh, There's also self-certified, a yellow or red icon showing. That sh means the document has been altered or it's been self-signed and these are not acceptable. Here's more incorrect submissions. So this, this is 
what Pedro was previously saying about a PDF package. This is not acceptable. These are single page documents similar to a zip file, and that does not meet our requirements. Also, individual sheets. We no longer do individual sheets. Um, everything needs to be grouped in one multi-page PDF. And here's a example of a incorrect submission on the document properties, as you see here, adding markup says restricted. Um, so if it says restricted, this will also be something that causes your files to be rejected. All security settings must stay allowed. Some house rules about uploading your plans. We ask that you please upload all your plans in one sitting. Do not upload some now that you have ready and some two days later. This will possibly cause us to open the review before you have submitted all the documents that you need to have reviewed. Soon when we upgrade the system, you will not be allowed to piecemeal the documents and will have to do it all in one setting. But however, when, right now the system leaves it open for attaching documents anytime. And therefore it creates mayhem when your documents are uploaded at different times. So again, please upload your documents all in one sitting. Also, please upload the documents only once. If you go back to the permit record and you see the attachments are still there, then we see them too, and you can rest assured that your documents have been uploaded correctly. We understand that there is a little delay now, and you may think that you didn't upload them correctly, um, but if you do see them there, they are there. Please do not upload them again. Submitting corrections. When submitting your corrections, the same rules apply that we previously discussed. We ask that you wait until the review has completed before you submit. So you can see that in the review section of CSS. If you see in the picture there, if that if your review says under review, you're looking at the first review type. For example, this one that says building commercial interior alteration. If it says under review or received, we're not ready for you to submit more documents because it's still going through the review process. Once you see that it says failed, then you can start uploading for your next submission. So this, what, you, what you're seeing here in this picture is what you can see in CSS when you're searching for that, that permit record. You search for your permit number, you go to reviews, and this review type and status screen will pop up. When submitting corrections, you must submit the whole set with all the sheets every time. The corrected sheets replace the old sheets and all the other sheets remain as well. So for example, in this little picture here, imagine this is your first version of the PDF file and you had sheet A1, A2, and A3. And then in version two, maybe A1 was fine, A2 needed corrections, and A3 was fine. So you're resubmitting all of them, and A2 is now the corrected sheet. And then the naming for the file for the resubmission, like we previously discussed, should be the discipline name followed by a V2 or a V3 or a V4, depending on what version you are on. And as always, a narrative response should be included with your corrections. OK, so that is our webinar presentation on how to submit and prepare your plans so that they don't get rejected. We wanted to share with you that coming soon, by coming soon I mean tomorrow, we will only have the building online application available online. So right now on CSS, we have 
the building online application, plus numerous specific uh, permit types that you can apply for. Unfortunately, it seems to cause some confusion, people not knowing what permit type to select, and they select the wrong permit type, which then causes um, more back and forth between us and, and you. And therefore, we are just going to have the building online application for you to apply for, and then we will create the right permit type and you will receive that permit type. And then that is where you pay. That's where you will pay. That's where you will upload your plans. Um, and that's where the whole process will be. So you'll start with the online application and then you will get a notification, which will be the um, invoice for payment. You, so on the building online application, the only thing you will upload is the application and the construction cost affidavit. Nothing else. The application and then a construction cost affidavit. You will then receive your invoice. And once you've paid the invoice, then you will upload all your documents. So this is how it'll work. You'll upload the application on the building online application. You will then receive an email with the uh, invoice. Once you have paid the invoice, you, on the invoice, it'll have the process number. After paying the invoice, then you will upload the documents. This will make the workflow go faster. Um, the idea is we have some people who have been using the wrong application. We spend then time undoing that permit, issuing uh, refunds. It's like a back and forth. It slows it down for everybody in line. The other thing that slows it down for everybody in line is if we're waiting on someone's payment and we keep that one as an open ticket or as an open item, we have to keep searching and checking back on it. And it again slows everybody in line. So the idea is with the building online application, you will fill out the application the same way you do. It's one sheet of paper. You fill out all the information, print it out, get it signed and notarized, upload it. And then that st will start the process. You will then get the invoice. And then once you have the invoice and paid, then you upload the drawings. And I get that there's a little back and forth, but it then hopefully will make the process go smoother. The same, the important thing is that you name your files correctly because the finalizing of the files is also been, become a very slow process. And we want to do this as fast as possible. So if you take the time, to be consistent with how you name your files, with making sure that the architect or engineer that's providing the files doesn't lock them, it will make the entire process flow smoother for everyone, not just for you, but for you the next time, or not just for your first project that you're processing, but for your 10th one that you're processing. So what we wanna do is try to look to make it as, as smooth a process for everyone involved. So again, all, all this information and all these instructions and this recording will be on the website for you to reference back to. Um, we can't stress how important it is to follow these in order to make sure that there you avoid any delays in, in your project. I don't see any comments in the chat box. Um, I'll leave it open for a few minutes so you can type any questions in and, and then like we said, we will address them in writing and post them on the website as well. It's Thank you. That disabled. I'm sorry, is it disabled? Yeah. Okay, so let's fix that. I only have one question and it's only because I got I got stupid one day and I uploaded the wrong plan to the wrong job. You uploaded the wrong plan to the wrong job. Okay. Yeah, it was. I emailed um, BPI and and you guys responded right away. Thank you and and put a note in the drawer in the plan. But I I'm going to try and not ever do that again. But if that situation happens, what we just do that email BPI and explain the situation. Yes. Yes, and and we can delete the plans. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to try to figure out why the chat box is this. 
Well, I have I have the dentist appointment, so I have to go. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate this, um, and I am doing this way you guys are mentioning. So thank you, and can, be can safe and and have can, a wonderful can you hear day. Me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to yeah. post the I'm trying to post a question on my iPad, but I don't see where oh, to post the me. question. Yeah, we we were just advised that the chat box is, doesn't seem to be working. I'm trying to figure it out, but if you'd like, go ahead and, and ask your question. Yeah, because I am a, uh, I bought a condo and it's just a basic renovation and I don't feel that I need an architect. So I drew up, I, I got original plans for the building and so forth and I did all of that. Uh, the problem is as a homeowner, I mean, as a condo owner, I have a lot of questions. I need to be able to speak to somebody. Can I make an appointment and talk to somebody? Because trying to do this online, it's not working very well. What we have been doing for the um, condo, for the owners is, if you reach out to us, we've been having somebody contact you and help you um, to, to get to understand the process. And so we've been uh, I, I've been getting a lot of emails personally from owners and then I'll either assist them or have someone um, assist them. We are working on an appointment system and once we get that actually working and functioning correctly, we're, we're going to first open up the appointments for the homeowners, um, for residents, because one, it's a smaller pool and we'll be able to work out any kinks with the with the owners. And then once we've got it running smoothly, we will we will be opening up the appointment system uh, for everyone. But um, unfortunately, it was promised for June 1st and I don't even think we're going to get it in July, um, early July. So we're still working on getting a, 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 a functioning online appointment system to make it easier for everyone. And I, and I appreciate your, if you need, you can email me. I'm Anna Salgueiro. So it's my name, A-N-A-S-A-L-G-U-E-I-R-O at MiamiBeachFL.gov. And um, uh, could you repeat that again, please? I, I'm trying a to write it down and you're going pretty fast. Anna Salguero. A N A S A L G U E I R O. I R O. Let me see. S A L G U E R I O. I R O. G U E I R O. If not, look on our website and and it's in there. And your uh, and your email address is is that at miamibeachfl.gov. All of our emails All are of... our names at miamibeachfl.gov. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. I have a yeah. Because... I, I see Isa has her name up. Do you want to ask your question? Yes. Um, I'm installing windows and doors, and I need to a call for inspection for tomorrow. That's online also, right? Yes. Uh, um, if you have access to that file on CSS, to that record, if you're a linked contact, then you should be able to go to the inspections and schedule your inspection. Okay. And the same way for CSI. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Yeah. You mentioned you wanted an index page. Do you want one for each discipline? Yes. Yes, one for each each set of plans should have an index page. Yeah. In but order I, to be I okay to, to just sign and seal the first sheet. Right, but it, it's not something we want. It's the legislation. The law requires it that way. It's not not what we want. The law requires that because the digital signature certifying that all those pages are included. When you sign that index page, you certify those that those pages are part of the package. But it's not what we want, it's what we must have. Understood. May I ask a question about all loading? Okay. Uh, when you when you go to attachments and um, and put all the files, the plans, the permit application, because of it, do you have to put do you have to submit and then put the plans routing sheet or do that together with the plans? The plan routing sheet should be a separate file. Yes, a separate file, but do you please submit in everything or just yes. a plan? 
I mean, everything right. Yeah, at the end it. of, at the ends of, well, you're going, to, if you're uploading everything in one sitting, you would yes, have yes. uploaded, you would see one plus sign, you would upload that, then you will see another plus sign, you would upload that, and when you're done with all your different uploads, then you can Do hit the submit at the end. Last. Got it, got it. So I click submit to everything at one time. Got it. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I have a question. Okay. We'll have um, Janelle. Um, yes. Uh, I was told that my first question is I was told that once we create the application, we need to mail the original to the city. Is this correct? No, that's not correct. Um, okay. You, but you should have all your forms on site for inspection if if requested. So if whatever you submitted online, have them on, on site as well. Okay, just making sure because the guidelines have said about mailing an application, so we wanted to be clear. The other thing is, is that um we've been having a problem um creating the applications. Um the system doesn't let us go past the address tab. I'm not understanding why. We sent a, uh, an email yesterday to the BPI. I haven't heard back. So with the address tab, are you putting in the address and not finding it? No, it's just not letting us create the application in general. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the address, so that, pulls from the property appraiser site so if it doesn't match exactly it may it may not connect um, sometimes it's better to put less in your address so for example if you're 100 lincoln road rather than putting your suite number and everything else just making it um, a, a more broad search and then you can usually find the address um, but if, if yeah. that's not helping, you just send us screenshots and we'll we'll get our IT support to help you with that. Another good idea is to go on the property appraiser and try with the folio and see what address appears. Because if you're giving us an address that does that that the county doesn't doesn't look at as being the official address, it won't come into the system. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I have another question on narratives. Do you want one general narrative or do you want a separate narrative in each of the disciplines? It's really up to you. You can provide one general narrative. If it's a big project, I suggest breaking it out to make sure that the reviewer finds their narrative. But again, there is nothing. The narrative is not a requirement from code. It is only a it is only a request that we have to make it easier to find where your corrections are. So if, if you think that it's a small enough project where you can get everything on one page and clearly indicate what's for who, do it that way. If it's a bigger project and there's a lot of looking up, I, I would recommend breaking it out into each discipline to make it easier for the reviewers to find the comments. Understood. One more question on for calculations. You mentioned Structural, it would be the discipline we would upload, but then we would have calculations that may have a hundred pages on that. How That'll do you be a separate file? That? That's a separate file. So the drawings, the structural drawings will be structural and it will say structural. The other ones will say structural calculations. And those and, are and supporting you'd have to documents upload. as opposed to plans. And then you would, oh, okay, that would be documents as well as plans. Okay, very good. I'm, I'm going to try to go down the list of people with their hands raised so we can do this kind of in an organized manner. Um, so I see one, well, no, with, with their with hands raised. Uh, Gordon, go ahead, Gordon. Gordon Loder. I have a couple of questions. I have a couple of questions. The first one goes back to a question that somebody asked previous, a few minutes ago about the signatures. So when we do the electronic signature, if we do it on, on a single sheet, we can't then compile all of those PDFs into a single document. Um, so does that mean we only sign electronically the the first sheet? Yes. Well, you can sign just the first sheet, but uh, you, you can also sign all of them. But the main thing is to compile the set into one file first, one multi-page file, and then apply the signatures. 
Yes, but I can only, but when I do that, my electronic signature won't let me apply signatures to multiple pages. Once, once I apply the signature once, that's it. Correct. So on the other pages, apply the image of it. You just apply it, or you can flatten it. You can apply before you can apply the signature to all the pages except the first one. Flatten it so it'll become an image. And, and then uh, you compose, you you put all your pages together into one single document and sign it on front. That's maybe. the last thing you do. Sign, the, apply the digital signature is the last thing you do with the document. Let you me, can apply me. it just to the just first my, page. Sorry, I just want to clarify. So I sign all the pages like a regular regular signature, and then the first page I do the electronic signature. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. All right. My, my second question is, um, you mentioned with the file naming, it's like uh, version one, like V1 for version one, two, etc. Is that in, is that different than naming the traditional way of doing it? Uh, revision A, B, C, D. No. This is it. Go ahead. The revision A, B, C, D is something that you use when you use your deltas on your drawing. You do not yes. need to, but what we're saying is as far as naming the file, we're asking that the file only be have the name of the discipline and the version of upload. Right. Because okay. you may have done three different changes between your first submittal and your and your second submittal because the owner changed their mind or something else happened. And so you may have additional deltas on your drawing, but this is really only your version two submittal to the city. Okay. Uh, thanks. My next question is when I when I send an email to BPI, um, and um, I have an issue where we forwarded some information, but I haven't received a response. How do I how do I elicit a response? BPI is very backed up, and I apologize for this. If you're having an issue with BPI, we have told people to reach out to either Pedro Narinder or myself. I can tell you that, or Natasha, we are flooded with emails daily, and okay. BPI is getting about 200 emails a day. And they're a couple of days behind. Um, Pedro, Natasha, Narinder, and I are each also getting about 150 uh, emails daily. No, 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 I appreciate that. I mean, a two-day yeah, two turnaround time, two or three days, since I'm not concerned about that. But it's more concerning, this is like a couple of weeks old. If it's a couple of weeks old and you haven't heard from them, take that same email and forward it to one of, to one of us and we will make sure that it's responded to. Okay, all right. And then Thank you. We're going to take um, a next guest because we only have a few minutes left. Um, Hello. Thank you. Um, I'm going to I'm going to read off people with their hands raised in the in the participants group. So I see one here 728-610-552. If you're still on, go ahead with your question. 728-610-552. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Isa? No, I'm okay. You're okay? All right. Let's see. I have a question. Uh, no, Michael Pilarski? Yes, a quick question. If I if I joined late, is there a recording of the session that would be available? Yes. yes. Yes, we are we are recording this session as we speak and it will be posted on our website on miamibeachfl.gov forward slash online permits. Thank you. Thank you. Next person with their hand up. I see SGB. SGB. Can okay. you hear me? My name is Tupac. Okay. We're, we're, we're going down the list of hands raised. Give me one second and we'll get to you. Tracy Dowd. Tracy Dowd. Yes, can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hear you. Okay. Um, my question is, um, we just do simple jobs like shutters. Mm -hmm. We do a site plan where we don't need engineering. So 
we don't we wouldn't need a stamp or signature from next year, would we? If what you're providing is an NOA that does not need a digital signature and seal, then it's not digitally signed and sealed. However, if you are doing shutters in a multi story building, you will need computations for the wind pressures and that will be digitally signed and sealed. It'll be calculations for the wind pressures. Um, so right, we you have documents that you're providing that are not that don't require a signature and seal. Then you upload those the same way you brought those in before without a signature and seal. If what you're bringing okay. is something that requires a seal, then it needs to be digitally signed and sealed. Okay, okay. got it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. We'll take one more question. Uh, Tupac, you had a question? Yes, I do. <clears throat> uh, I assume it is a plan sign and seal and scan them. And they're asking me, I don't have a digital signature right now, but they're asking me to notarize my signature in the drawing that I submitted. How can yes. I do it? The state of Florida allows that. There is on our website, there is a form and you would download the form. You print it out. You physically sign and seal it and you get it. Um, does it have to be notarized? Yeah, it has to be notarized. And it has to be notarized. And that's and not they, a big deal, but how you uh certified that the notary is uh, i mean the notary is real oh tupac this is an emergency chance that the that the that the, that the state has given engineers to upload their files to give you time to get your digital signature um, so we have to trust your honesty when you upload your own certificate okay I'll okay, I'll but, I'll but let me warn you. If, let me finish. This this uh, this uh, chance expires on July 14th. So you get your signature today, apply for it, so you will have it on time, or else you will not be able to upload plans in the future. It doesn't take too long. It takes about a week to get it. And it's not that expensive. Okay. I will do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Pablo, I'm sorry I missed you. I see you had your hands up. Pablo Palacios, go ahead. Yes, yes morning. Uh, I have a couple of questions. My first question <coughs> is regarding the version. Uh, I understand that the first version doesn't have a V number on it, right? The first version does, doesn't, need doesn't need the V on it. We, we know that's the first one, only subsequent ones. So the subsequent would be a V2 or V1? Would be V2. Oh. Right. And the other question is I have a, I'm doing a renovation in a condo and uh, I saw a form that is called flooring permit affidavit. I have to apply that. I still have to apply the, the flooring permit affidavit with a permit. Yes. Uh, yes. If you're applying for the flooring only permit, you need to submit the flooring affidavit. Yeah, but it's more than just the flooring, so so I will have to do it anyway. Yeah, you would include that also. Yes, you would. You would include that also. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, thank so you. Thank you all. Thank you all for your time today. Um, if we, if you still have any questions, we ask that you do send those to our BPI at Miami Beach FL .gov. Um, we do try to get to those as quickly as possible. And again, our emails are on the website. If you need anything, you can always contact us. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. And for you. Thank, Thank you. you.